Hi, this is Tony Self. Um, I uh, tried this once before, but I figured you had to hit a button for actually streaming uh, what you want to do. I've been working, um, I don't know, I just got this, uh, this bug about actually trying to figure out how to stream from my laptop. So I figured it out finally. It took a little time, but um, I am live right now. I'm going to provide you some tips uh, today uh, and in the future. Uh, one thing I wanted to do is just want to do more video content and just to kind of get out there and teach a little bit. And um, I missed that. So I wanted to provide some tips and what I want to do. So the one thing that I'm going to show you how to do today is uh, this little thing here. So this is a, um, a video that um, I was, uh, or the picture that I need to create for the intro. So this is what I wanted to show you how I did this uh, using Photoshop. And that's what we're gonna go over really quickly today. So I got it all ready to go here. And I'm gonna go ahead and show my video here. This is really cool by the way, because I can actually go from different screens to different screens, which is, is unique for me. Um, Cause I, I watch YouTube quite a bit. In fact, um, that's how we pretty much use, like watch anything at home now is using YouTube uh, and Facebook Live, of course. So um, here's the screen. So what I wanna do is I wanna take two images. Basically I gotta have this image here which is a background wallpaper. And onto that, I want to put uh, this picture. Now, a lot of people will have uh, images that you want to actually put on top of something, but you got the background. I'm going to show you using Photoshop how we remove that background and then add some text and that type of things. Not so hard at all. It's actually quite easy. Uh, and yes, uh, this picture is me uh, the, at a great angle. Uh, one thing that uh, the person did uh, doing this was she took some amazing pictures and she actually had a lot of like little clips in the back of my, my suit and we had to get the perfect angle and I didn't hold my breath in. So that, that's, actually, that's actually me. So um, I'm going to go ahead and take this and we're going to merge it on. And what we want to try to do is the final, uh, final picture is actually have it on top of each other. So to do so, first thing we do is we have to have Photoshop installed on our computer. And um, I'll go ahead and I have the two images right here and I'll open with uh, Photoshop. And Photoshop will start right up and a few here. And then it'll show the image um, onto the screen. And this is uh, the, the image there now in the Photoshop environment for those who have not used it before. I'm in a, a kind of the expert mode. You can do guided or quick. I like expert mode. I have my toolbar on the right hand side and layers. Everything is stacked upon each other. Next, I'm gonna open up the image I wanna put in there. And this is this one here. So right click on it, show open with, and I'll do the Adobe Photoshop Elements Editor. And now I have my picture in Photoshop. Uh, the way it works in uh, the Photoshop Elements is you'll see I have uh, the two spots right here. I got the spot right there, and then also that one right there. So uh, this is my picture, and I click on this, it'll take me back to this. And I'm gonna put this photo on top of that one. Now. Again, uh, if I were to take this whole photo here, I'll just do the selection, select that, copy it. Now it's in upper memory. And then if I go back to the picture here and go back to edit and paste, you'll see that I don't want that. I want to have it so that white background is removed. So I'm going to control and Z to undo that. So how to do so? Uh, the way you do it, and I struggled with this initially, I don't know why, because I go back in Windows and Mac all the time, so I think that's kind of what uh, threw me off a little bit. Uh, the way to remove a background, obviously if it's a consistent color, that's ideal. If not, you're going to have to uh, actually kind of, you can't really use a magic wand, but you try to get a, a consistent color in the back. So this is called the magic wand, and then when I use the magic wand, you'll see that when I click it, it selected the entire white area and it's smart and I can uh, adjust the tolerance. In this case, I have a 32. So even though I have the white shirt, it didn't pick up the white shirt. But if I do this, I'm gonna have this white, that white between the arms and also here between the legs. So I'm gonna have those as well. Uh, the way you remove this very quickly in Photoshop is you select it and then you position your magic wand in the other areas and you hold your shift button down. You'll see that the icon shifted to a plus sign, which means it's gonna also select that one, this one, and this one. And you may have to like zoom in um, so you can see that that's um, been selected, that's been selected, and then also uh, down below has been selected. And then if I were to save, the, or actually to take this and select it and copy like I did before, all it would actually show is the white background. So if I do that, you'll see, edit, copy, 
go back to here and paste it, it's not what we want, but we're getting close to it. So edit, paste, you'll see it's the, well, if you want a kind of a shadow outline, that's how to tell you do it too. Um, but I don't want that. I don't actually want myself there. So what I'll do is there's a thing called inverse in Photoshop. And this is the reason why I have Photoshop and I love it. Uh, if you click under select and choose inverse, it will actually now has just me here. And then you have to, of course, copy it. So if I go back to the hard quartz wallpaper and paste it, you now see me right here. So and then I can just adjust this. And I got a little bit of the background up top. So I'll show you how to get rid of that too. You may have to adjust the tolerance sometimes, and I'm just readjusting it here. But um, and then you hit the the plus sign. You'll see that this is a selection. It's a layer. So whenever you want to delete something, say like right here, I got a little bit of that whiteness. I'm gonna delete. And oh, that's weird. I didn't have that last time I did this. So I'm gonna take my uh, my brush here. And I'm gonna erase it using the eraser. And I'll just take that. And I'll erase it. Oops. Watch my head. Control Z. And then we'll take that, there we go. So I just erased it out. So now I have the, um, that, uh, my image over there, it's on uh, stacked on top. If I wanna do uh, any text, which I do, I'll just uh, click the text button here, uh, make sure it's the right size. In this case, it's 60. I'm gonna adjust that to 100 because everybody likes to see their name in larger font. And I'll just type in Tony. And then, if I would get, you'll notice too, it added a text layer, and this is all stackable. So um, if I wanted this to be behind it, in, in uh, Photoshop, I just take this and drag it behind. You'll see it's behind. That's that's how uh, that's how they they do make that. Uh, it doesn't really matter because I'm gonna have it over here. So I have it here, and then I'm gonna add some additional, and I can make it a bit smaller. We'll do this one. We'll make this one uh, 80. And then I'll put my email. I already did this, but okay. And then you tap enter. It's just like a word processor, and I'll just put in my phone number. And then, of course, you always save. That's bigger, actually. Uh, oh, because it's at 100. Oh, so what happened is I adjusted the uh, a name down. I want to make that 80 and make this. So I'm selecting it all. I'm going into the text part, make that larger. I'll make that 120. And that's uh, the size, point size. And hit that. And then you have that ready to go. So now you want to save this work. You'll see it's layered real quick. I'll click File. I'm going to save this as a PDF, a PSD file to the to the desktop, and I'll save this. I'll give it a unique name. Save to the desktop. And if I minimize this, you'll see the file called Save and the Save.psd. And if I want to go ahead and now create a JPEG file, which then I can drop in pretty much anything on my phone, wherever I want to go. I just click uh, File. I can do Save for Web or Save As as JPEG. I'll do Save for Web so you can show you the dialog box. And here I have, I can adjust the quality of it. It tells me the original size, percent wise. You can, if you don't want to do JPEG, you can do PNG, GIF, all different types. It's one of the, one of the problems with, with Photoshop. It's really sophisticated, but at the same time, you can do so much with it. And I'm gonna go ahead and click Save. I'm gonna save it to my desktop. And now I have created a JPEG file, which I can then drop anywhere I want. And there it is, save.jpg. And it's just like, so it has me on top with all the other things. That's how you create these images. So hopefully that was um, informational and you liked it. Uh, let me know if you have any other tips. Uh, again, I'm just uh, trying to figure out this whole uh, broadcasting thing from the computer, which is a bit different. And I wanted to just uh, go ahead and do some uh, teaching and get everybody out some information. So thank you so much for watching. And if you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, have an amazing night. It's uh, 5 o'clock in California, and it's cold, uh, real cold. But overall, it's awesome here. All right, thank you so much. Everyone have a great day. And here's my intro out. I'll have a good one. See ya.